I need to tell you something um, about the possible trials. So maybe it's good that I split this presentation from uh, Lynn's presentation, which will be more global on collecting information on CDG and understanding CDG better for any future trial globally in depth. This is what we are planning now is a pragmatic approach. The pragmatic approach means we have a potential drug, a potential treatment, but we don't have enough information on the fluctuation of symptoms and lab results and findings in CDG. So the NIH is already busy with collecting all that information, but they are collecting a lot on a lot of layers in depth, a lot of patients, not just PMM2. So they are in this long process with a happy ending. And we are saying we want to have a quick process and just get some data together. Who knows, maybe this drug comes out in six months and we want to be ready for that. So uh, just stay with me with this. <laughs> so what we were thinking, the only way we can quickly do it is to get a lot of doctors and a lot of patients involved in this. And let's see if we can collect enough data in this short period of time. So actually from Europe, these centers all agreed to participate and provide patients and they have per center five to seven PMM2, so CDG1A patients. And Germany, they agreed, but they haven't technically got involved yet. Correct, Mary Jo? Well, they've been, they don't have patients, but they've given us referrals to, to within their networks. So. Okay. So we hope that from Europe, we already have uh, many centers who will provide us uh, with patient information. And then uh, in the US, we are just building our centers. So I think, I'm not sure how many are consented, Mary Jo, from the centers. Uh, Seattle, they consented. Mayo also? Not yet. Not not yet. That, but they showed interest and uh, Tulane and then uh, uh, Pittsburgh. And so the NIH situation is I involved, I put them on the slide because we are doing this together. But their goal is different from our goal. They are really thinking long term and in depth. And we are thinking now pragmatic. So what do we want to do? We want to collect clinical and biological information in patients. But we want to do it easy. So what we were thinking, we just collect the information we would collect anyway. So your child had hypothyroidism. Some of the others didn't. But when we measure another time, maybe it's an abnormal result and then it goes back to uh, abnormal again. That's not a good marker because if a marker is going like this, I cannot use that as a as, as follow-up marker because when I start to treat in six months, maybe it's randomly going up and down again. So what we need to do to, to get out normal markers, we measure anyway, coagulation factors, gross hormone receptor uh, related <coughs> markers, which are clinically relevant. So for example, it would increase the risk for bleeding or increase the risk for a thrombosis or, in, or would cause a hormone problem. All the stuff we are measuring in our patients anyway to keep them healthy, that we will collect those. So not with a scientific hat on when we are thinking whatever possible measure, measurement in whatever body fluid and cell and tissue possible. We are just saying, we see your children as a normal doctor. We take the samples, what we always do, but we will do it in a, in a well-structured manner. We will take all the labs, labs every time we are seeing you, not like saying the last time it was good, so I skip, you know? And then just go for, actually I thought we go longer than six months. I thought we were saying one and a half year, but even better if uh, we, 
Okay, so this is just a graph to show you that labs in CDG, stuff we measure all the time, like this is um, a liver function enzyme, which also mirrors the muscle function a little bit, and that's a liver function enzyme. See, when a lab result is going all over the place, that's not a good marker to follow because when after therapy I measure again, I'm not sure if it improved just by itself or the drug did something. So we wanna find those lab results which are clinically relevant and which are steady and stable. So this is overlapping with the NIH idea. So of course we wanna be sure of all the features we experience in CDG. So we will also clinically collect all the information, but that's something we also, in this pragmatic approach, we just do it what we do always as what's, what we're supposed to do in a CDG patient compared to the NIH who will go in depth and will look at symptoms we don't regularly follow every year in a, in a patient. And then we will try to figure out which parameter we can rely on. And hopefully with this quickie approach, we can actually find something which is uh, reliable because that's, that's a challenge out there. And maybe if we have a little bit more time and more patience, we have more chance to have a good parameter. And then again, when the clinical observational follow-up trial is working fine in a center, that's a good center to start a clinical trial because they already showed that they are structured and they provide the data and they are reliable, then it's a good center to offer therapy, experimental therapy for your child. So maybe not all the centers will do this because maybe some of them won't do well in the first part. So it's just regular stuff you see, history, physical, the Im imaging studies are like MRI. We usually do it once in a while in a patient's eye exam. We also usually do it once in a while. We'll do it once a year in this case. Um, and then um, what we are s recommending is to do this every th six months. So most of you who are seeing me only coming once a year, and that would be totally appropriate for a patient, a stable patient with CDG. So this would be extra burden on you and your child to have a, that extra investigation, although that would be just as any other clinical visit. It won't be like torture and I don't know. It will be really just a follow-up. So maybe you're saying, I'm not traveling to New Orleans or Mayo Clinics or Seattle just to have blood draw and uh, eye exam and... Uh, <laughs> cardiac echo. That's possible. A Mary Jo can help to set up um, such an approach as well. So maybe we just discuss with your doctor at the spot to either take those blood samples um, and then send the bills to glycomine uh, for the extra investigation or send the samples to us or fly you in whatever is the closest center to you, and then let all the investigations happen at that center. So that's flexibility. You don't have to come to the trial center like every six months. Probably it's the easiest way though, because if you come, then we, we are making sure that no sample will get lost. We have the same lab, the same control range. So that's just a thought. Okay. so. If you look at this uh, li list, it's like a lot, but I'm telling you actually most of, most of these parameters are or have been measured in your child, just not systematically like that. And then we will also do the so-called Nijmegen CDG rating scale. Those of you who are seeing me we did that in the past for your child to see this is progression and the NIH is also using the same score. So again, we will unite forces, of course, just 
with a little bit different hat on what's a short-term goal and what's a long-term goal. But in our case, there is no invasive um, study, except for it's a ton of blood we are taking. But yeah, on another level, I think knowing whether the coagulation is good in your child, it's not like a silliness, it's a safety uh, issue. So whoever wants to participate in this observational trial should sign an informed consent, need to have PMM2 CDG as a diagnosis. And I know that there are several patients here with a different diagnosis, but I think we learned it in many metabolic disorders that when a new therapy was discovered in one type, the therapies were just zoomed in, like they just came right away in all the other types because there was a proof of principle and then you could take that idea and develop new therapies. So any new therapy in CDG would give benefits for all the other patients who are not um, right away benefiting. So this is really for CDG, uh, type 1A, and the NIH trial is for all kind of CDGs. All right. So we talked about how long and then minimum six months, but I think we can expect that probably not all the children will get into uh, the therapeutic trial right away. So we will have children who will go longer with the observational study, especially because the youngest children, we cannot put on an experimental drug right away. So what Patrice said, the normal way of doing it, we start with um, young adults, um, and when they are showing uh, symptoms, then we tell the FDA um, that this is a life-saving drug, there is no other option, and they usually allow us to enroll younger people, younger patients.